Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord uh, this morning. Our God is good. Good to have everybody on board. And we're excited about what God is going to do. And, and as we enter into the praise and worship portion of the church service, the word of the Lord tells us, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him. Sing songs unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. And on that, brothers and sisters, let us lift up our hands and praise the wonderful name of the Lord. Yes. Heavenly Father, we lift up hands to you and we praise you because you are the creator. You have done wonderful, marvelous, and great things, dear Lord. You created the heavens and the earth, dear Lord. You have made us, dear God, and we thank you, Jesus. And we thank you yes, for your goodness, dear Lord. Amen. Let's give the Lord a round of applause. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you Jesus, for your mercy and your grace, dear Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And it's good to have, I uh, want to give a shout out to Tyra Griffith. I'm Griffin. glad. Griffin. We're glad to have you on in, in the church service with us, and I'm hoping that Mr. Uh, Brian is on, the one that goes by Clan. I think his name is Clan. Cobra Clan. So I hope that he is on. Want to give a shout out to Talia, uh, Selena, TT. Just want to say hello to y'all, and um, Shania. Want to say hello, and let's see who else. Want to give a shout out to. Uh, who am I missing? Brother Lance. I don't hardly shout out to him. I want to say hello to Brother Lance. Brother Henry Glover. God bless you. Uh, Marine and God. So the Lord is good. And a shout out to everyone. I'm just going to say yes. hello to everyone. And we're going to rock and roll with this. So let's get this thing moving. Amen. And before I go on, remember all Christians faithfully and consistently pay their tithe and gladly give in the offering as unto the Lord, and God will bless us, y'all, right? Yeah. He will bless us if we pay our tithe, and it's a commandment of God. And so uh, I believe that below me there should be a, a thing where you can see where you can give, and really the easiest way to do it, just go over to the hyperlink, to the hyperlink in the comment section, and there you can just click on that and you can give. And we appreciate your giving and everything. So let's do that as unto the Lord because God commands us to do that. And so let us pray over the gift and the giver. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord Jesus, for this time of giving. Father, we ask that you will bless both the gift and the giver according to their giving. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. amen. All right. So the Lord is good. And we're going to come out of the book of John. The Gospel of John, chapter 12, verse 24. I'm hoping that um, Brother Nick is online with us tonight, uh, this morning. I'm hoping. The book of John, chapter 12, verse 24. I'm just going to turn over to it real quick. I know it's already up on the screen. Chapter 24 through 27. Ooh, my fingers are dry. Word says this. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause came I unto this hour. And brothers and sisters, with the help of the Lord, pardon me as I loosen up here, with the help of the Lord and the Holy Spirit, we want to minister on the title of a message, It's Time to Execute. 
All right, that is the title. And we're going to tie it all up where it will make sense. It's time to execute. That being said, let us pray. And before we pray, before we pray, brothers and sisters, I want you to always, when you're in church, I want you to look for game changers, things that will help you, right? Because the purpose of coming to church is that we are being served by God. The Lord is serving us. Who said, who said and did not lie when he said this? He said, where two or three are gathered together in my name. He said, there am I in the midst of them. And so we come to church. The purpose of church is for God to serve us, right? And we come to worship God, to serve us so that we can serve him when we are not in church, okay? So the Lord is here to serve us, to bless us, to encourage us, and God is not into wasting people's time. You can blame all the mistakes on me, you know, for stuttering or whatever, right? But give God all the glory for whatever is, it is, is accomplished. The Lord doesn't mess up any messages, and God knows how to speak English. He knows how to speak all the languages, right? Amen. God is good, and the Lord is, again, he's not going to waste your time this morning. He has a message, a real message for you this morning. Let us pray. Reverend Serrano, sir, if you don't mind asking God's blessing on this message, please. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord God, for this time to be in your presence, to hear your word, the message that you prepared for your people here this morning, Lord. Pray right now, as the message comes forth, that it touches hearts, Lord God, that we will respond to what you're saying, Lord, that we will draw closer to you. Help pastor as it brings forth that which you laid on his heart, Lord. Pray that you give him strength, clarity of mind, Lord, that boldness that is required of a preacher, Lord God, to say your word. Pray also that the result of this service will be that your name will be exalted, that you will be lifted up, and that you will, will be done. Lord, we ask this in the mighty name of him that was crucified for us. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Our God is good. We'll see what the Lord does with this. And sometimes the thing is, is that brothers and sisters, it's all about getting direction. And we want to help some people because I don't want you just coming to church, just, just uh, uh, enjoying the services and, and everything without applying this stuff. Because if you do not apply this stuff, all it is is just a sweet sounding, it's like a musical instrument that you're listening to saying, man, that sounds good. And just let it go and keep on going the same old direction. The purpose of church is to bring forth a change in people's lives to shape and mold us all into becoming more and more of what God would have us to become, right? And the ultimate goal is to make it to the kingdom of heaven above all things, brothers and sisters, we have to make it to heaven. You cannot uh, stay here. We, you, you cannot stay here on this earth. All of us have to go. All of us have to get up out of here. Amen. All right? And so we want to make sure that we are headed to heaven. We want to make sure that we have enough about us, that we have a real enough salvation to where we can cash it out, right, when it's time to cash out and it's going to have, the money's going to be in the bank and that money is eternal life. And just for illustration's sake. So with this message, uh, sometimes messages come through news that you hear as a pastor. Things normally, they, they're going to get back to me. If God wants something about you to come back to me, it will get back to me. You can't even stop it, right? Because God cares about people and sometimes yes. the Lord even deals with the heart of the pastor too yes. without anyone saying anything but sometimes news just plumb get back to the pastor and and so and so you wonder and you go and well listen these people have to bring they're gonna have to do the scriptures right yes. we enjoy the wednesday night service man I, I enjoy preaching it but i will enjoy it more i, I would enjoy it more when people live out going after words okay yeah. so now we're going to deal with it's time to execute it's time to execute if i can read it just read one verse verse 
Verse 24, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth or brings forth much fruit. Now, as to bring a focus this morning, to bring a focus, we want to talk about the definition of execute. We want to talk about the definition of execute. The word, uh, the dictionary tells us, it says, to execute means to carry out or put into, a, into effect a plan or, or course of action. To produce or such as a work of art, to perform an activity, a maneuver requiring care or skill, law make, a legal instrument valid by signing or sealing it, to carry out, to execute means to carry out. But there is one more definition of the word execute, which when I read this and when I heard about it, it really hit me. And I said, you know what? I believe that the church needs to hear this, right? At first I was going to ignore it, but when this guy had brought this out, I said, man, you know what? God began to deal with me. People need to hear this. The word execute in the second part means to carry out a sentence of death or kill. Mm -hmm. To carry out a sentence of death or kill. Now let's bring this all together. Check this out. Real salvation comes to an individual one way, y'all. It comes to an individual one way. And I'm talking about real salvation. I'm not talking about fake salvation. People can fake, you can fake anything, right? You can fake anything. But real salvation comes to an indi individual one way, and that way is through execution. Amen. That way is through execution. And I'm talking about the entire definition of execution, right? It's when a person sentences the old life to death in order to get the new life in Jesus that goes into action and bringeth forth much fruit or die in order to do or execute in order to execute. And this is the determining factor of real salvation. A person has to execute in order to execute. A person has to die in order to do something, y'all. And I began to think about this thing and not to make this all about me. I'm just bringing forth the end, uh, just a, a point here, right? That I remember there was a time where I was dealing with a situation and I had to make a decision, right? And for me to, to do what I needed to do, something had to be put to death. I had to bring uh, uh, the very thing or the way that I was living to a stop, a complete stop. And I'm going to tell you something. I said, guess what? I'm throwing away the key. In other words, when I get into this, when I, when I uh, cause this thing to die that needs to die in my, law, in, in my life, I'm going to make sure I put the nails in the coffin, right? And what it did was, brothers and sisters, it caused me to focus. It caused me to gain power. It caused me to get a new life in the endeavor uh, that I had decided to take, right? And that's the same way it is with salvation. When a person truly meets God in the reality, when a person gets right with the Lord to the point where they bring forth fruit, to the point where, where they know that they know that they are saved, where they know uh, that God hears their prayer, when they, it is only when, and I do mean only when, they execute the old life. When they execute the life, then they will execute God's instruction in their life. In other words, they will begin to live out God's plans when they die from the old plans, right? right. Execution brings power, y'all, yes. to the person. Mm -hmm. 
in any endeavor, Amen. especially in Christianity. Amen. If you do not die, you will not live. Amen. If you do not die, there will never be any fruit. There, Jesus will always be inconvenient, right? right? The word of God will always rub us wrong. Right. We can never be spiritual. We can never make it to heaven until we execute. Something has to die in order for faith to live, right? Because faith without works is dead. Faith without execution is dead. The old man of unbelief, the old girl of unbelief has to be executed in order to execute. I'm telling you, this changes everything. Look for the game changers. Amen. That's why the word of the Lord tells us this morning that therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a what, y'all? New creature. It says old things are what? Passed away. In other words, old things have ceased in that person's life. Old things have died. It's passed away, and behold, all things are become new, and all things are of God. If you want to change this morning, die. That's what I'm saying. If you want to change this morning, die. Only, I didn't even bring the rest of my, uh, my deal here, but I got the word of God. Amen. If you want to change, you got to die. The, the thing about it is this. As we continue on in, the, in this scriptures here, Jesus said in the word of God, he said, now is my soul troubled. You know, our soul get troubled before it's time to execute, doesn't it? You think you're the only one that ever got nervous before uh, dying right. to yourself, right. before making the decision to serve God? Yeah. You think you're the only one that got troubled before execution, right? Uh, Jesus was troubled before his execution as far as death is concerned, as we see here in scripture, right? right? The Bible said he was troubled, but what did he say? So what am I going to tell, tell uh, my father? Am I going to tell my father to save me from this hour? He said, I did not come to be saved from the hour of execution. I came to die. Amen. In the hour of execution, y'all, right. Jesus had to die in order for something else to live. Now, check this out, y'all. It's amazing how nature is. It's amazing how nature is. It's like God uh, has created his creation to the point where uh, if something dies, something else receives strength. Something else receive, receives power, right? For instance, if you take the tail of a lizard and you cut it off, it's going to grow an, another tail. If you take, uh, and that means cut it off, in other words, you put that tail to death, you kill the one tail, it's going to grow another. And I would not doubt if it doesn't come back bigger. Also, in, in the landscape kingdom. If you cut back a tree, you begin to kill some branches off of that tree. You can cut that thing way back. All of a sudden, what happens, y'all? It begins to grow. He even talked about it with the seed here. You take that seed, you put it in the ground, it's going gonna, it's gonna to bring forth what? It's going to bring forth fruit. You got to bury it, though. You got to, uh, that burial symbolizes death, right? And it goes into all other areas of, of uh, people's lives. We've even heard about how that people lose their ears and everything, but all of a sudden their sense of touch is enhanced, right? And this is the thing that I'm trying to tell you tonight, that or this morning, that when death takes place, when something which is uh, has been drastically destroyed out of a person's life, yes. that person gets empowered with change. Yes. A uh, power comes uh, to that person to be able to look at things with a clearer head. They begin to see things, uh, uh, things are more... Uh, uh, are real to them. They begin to see uh, where, for instance, if they could not see the grooves and everything at one time, they will begin to be able to see the dimensions clearer. 
or the grooves in something or in that situation, they'll be able to see things a little bit clearer because they have allowed um, the thing that stopped them to be able to see clear to die. And, and that thing that was in between them and that object or that was blinding them was something that was dear to them, but they said, I am putting it to death. I'm trying to get somebody to understand something. I'm here to tell you that the, the way of changing, the way of getting right with God, the way of having a mind to do the things that are of the, are of the Lord, a person has to die. Jesus said, what shall I ask uh, my father to save me from this hour? He was talking to his soul. He was talking to his heart. I'm not going to have my father save me from this hour. I came to die. And the earth has never been the same since the death of Jesus. All right. It can't even go back. When something dear dies to a person, when something close dies to, uh, to, the, uh, to that person, guess what? That person cannot be the same prior to that death. All right. Think about uh, something that's happened in your own life. Think about a drastic change uh, that had taken place or a death of a loved one close to you. Can, are you the same person as you were prior to the death of that person or the death of that loved one that was close to you? You think differently in some aspect, right? And so death brings forth power to be able to see things and to approach things in a different manner. You take a man who is wealthy, you take everything away from him, he becomes stronger. He begins to get the wealth that he worked for, and he probably had worked for it. It may have took him 20 years to get to where he was. But all of a sudden, if you take everything from him and strip him of everything, his realization, his self-awareness will begin to wake up. He'll begin to figure out how to get uh, what he lost back in a matter of one to two years, something that took him 20 years. You see what I'm saying? Because it brings power when you die. The reason why some people cannot live right, serve right, walk right with God and be holy is because they have not received the strength to be able to do that. And that strength only comes through execution. Execution brings forth execution in anyone's life. All right. Yes. Jesus, uh, he said, I'm not going to ask my father to save me from this hour. I did not come for that. I came to die so that men and women can receive salvation. I came to die so that I can rapture the church one day, so that I can renovate uh, uh, the heavens and the earth with fire and make this earth into the kingdom of God. Jesus came to do that this morning. He came uh, to die and that he did, though he was afraid. He was afraid, but he took the jump. He was afraid, uh, but, he, but he executed. He executed in action and in death. And what happened, y'all? He rose on the third day. He rose on the third day. His whole body was transfigured into glory. Yes, it went down in corruption, taking the sin of the, the earth on him and all. It went down of the world on him. He went down uh, with the corruption of the world on his body. But he rose, what? Yeah. In power. Yes. He rose uh, with all, saying, all power has been given unto me. But the power would never have came if Jesus would not have died. Right. How about yes. us this morning? Yes. Uh, when are you going to die? Right. News get back to me about people who are so weak in God. Mm. They still curse because they have not been executed and they are not executing any of the messages. Mm. They still will not pay their tithe. They still will not uh, uh, serve God. They still live from church service to church service just to hear uh, some good speech or something. But let me tell you something. Wisdom does, uh, uh, rather, uh, knowledge does no one any good All right. who, do, who will not apply it. Yes. 
Yes. You cannot. You can hear sound stuff, y'all. Listen to me. You can hear things uh, that will cause uh, the blessings, or, or or that can be a potential blessing in your life, and really banging at the door of your heart, banging hard. That's what wisdom does. Yes. But you and I, or rather, knowledge does that, because knowledge is only potential power. Wisdom is the application of knowledge, right? As knowledge is beating on your door with two hands knocking like a police officer, trying to kick the door, trying to tell you, hey, look, you need to die. You need to uh, execute. You need to go into action, brothers and sisters. And we go, oh, that sound good. Oh, that sound good. But until we do, guess what? All it is is a sweet sound. I was listening, I was reading in the scripture this morning, and in the book of Psalms, it talked about the adder, which is some type of a cobra snake. And what the charmers would do, he said, this is what the wicked is like. He said, it's just like a, a cobra, in so many words, that is that cannot hear. And as the charmer plays on, on his horn, it just lays there. That's all it does. It lays there and does absolutely nothing, right? Now, and I went on YouTube and I started looking at how they are able to make the snake kind of go back and forth and do all this stuff. Kind of weird. But at the time, people used to do that. They still do that in places like India or whatever. But anyway, to make a point, and he said, that's what the wicked is like. They close their ears. They shut their eyes. And they do nothing. Even though uh, God is playing so skillful. Yes. You can't get more skillful than what God is. All right. Brothers and sisters, you can't get more wisdom than what, than what God has. Or uh, knowledge than what God has. But until you execute. Until you execute. Guess what? You'll never have the power. I will never have the power. No one can ever have the power to live for God until they execute. We have to die in order to do. Yes. Because if we do not die, mm -hmm. we will not do. Okay. If we will not die, we will never have power, man. Yes. We will never be what we're supposed to be for God if we're not willing to die, right? Right. Oh, and, I, and I'm not trying to make this in a, a prosperity thing. All successful people, y'all, listen to me. At one point, in order to get to where they got to, they had to die. Yes. They had to die. They had to completely say, I, I am going to be born again in this. Yes. I need to be the person that's going to, I have to be that. And if we're going to heaven, we're going to have to be heaven, not earthly. Yes. We're going to have to have Christ in us, not outside of us. Yes. We got to have the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus on the inside, y'all. Uh, we have to be crucified with Jesus. The old man has to be crucified with the Lord. The old man has to die, and it's drastic. One man said, take a shotgun to the car. <laughs> I like how he said this. He said, take a shotgun to the car. Boom. And then, then he said, and I'm not going to drive it. And no one else is going to drive this thing. Mm. And that's the moment where his life changed. Yeah. And he used that to bring forth an, uh, uh, an illustration here. You have to do something drastic. And here it is. What is it that you need to do drastic? This morning, that's going to change everything as far as God is concerned. What is it that's going to have to die this morning? i tell you what's going to have to die. The whole life. Life surrendered to Jesus. Yes. My old man, my old me is dying this morning. So what are we going to say? Are we going to say to God, uh, you know what, God? I'm going to save myself from this hour. There are some people after they die, they go to the they go to the appeals court. They start to the sentence, the sentence of death is they give themselves the sentence of death just to go to the appeals court and change it. 
I don't have time to change it. Do it and, and, and let it be forever. Really, it also, death is also something that is a no comeback from thing too, you know. When a person is dead, they're dead. And when we die, we have to die. My question is, will you execute? Faith without works is dead, right? And where there, and, and so therefore, brothers and sisters, we have to put it into action. And the question is when? The question is when? How long are we just going to join a church and do nothing? How long are we going to listen to messages and not receive Jesus? It's time to execute. Yes. It's time to execute. The Bible tells us, he that loveth his life shall what, y'all? Lose it. You keep loving your life, you're going to lose, right? Yes. You keep loving the way that you are. If I keep loving the way that I am as, as far as in my center paths, I just I love the way that I am. Guess what? You can never lose something that you love. Not when it's within your power. Not, with it, not when it's within our own power. We can never lose something that we love when it's within our own power. But look at this, y'all. Because our life is in our power. The life is the most precious. Your life and my life, that's the most precious thing that we ever have, that, that we'll ever have, right? Mm -hmm. Think about it. If the doctor came over to you and said, you're about to die. Guess what? All of a sudden, we get serious. All of a sudden, we're going, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. And we got to... Take a deep breath. We got to think about it for a moment. I only got two weeks. I only got a week or whatnot. We're going to think about it, how I'm going to tell this one, how I'm going to tell that one. I got to make arrangements. It gets serious, right? Amen. But when someone says, you know what? I'm going to let go of the thing that's most dear to me. That's my own life and give it to Jesus. Yes. That's when you gain life. Yes. Well, how does it work? Try it. Sometimes you can't, you don't worry about how it's going to work. Try it. Give your life to Jesus. Yes. Say you will have life in this world. He, or he rather said, he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto eternal life. And then he said again, if any man, what y'all serve me, let him follow me. And then it says, and where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. God will answer your prayer. I'm here to tell you there's power when you execute. I'm about to get up out of here. But it's time for us to say, you know what? Something's got to die. Something has to die. In order to have change, and I re I'm just saying it again, because I don't know if I am making an impression enough. I'm really wanting to hit home with some folk. In order to change, in order to say, to get right with God, you're going to have to die. One man told me this when he got saved. And, and I really, I really tripped out when he said it, but it goes along with this message. He said when he got saved, he said that he wouldn't even listen to black gospel. Now, this is him now. I'm not saying not to listen to black gospel. But he said he he wanted such a change to take place in his life. Mm -hmm. He he made sure that everything about him, including his black his blackness. I'm not saying anything against that, right? I'm not saying that you have to do this, but for this guy, he said this. He said all he listened to was country gospel. He said all he listened to was country gospel. He wouldn't even listen to uh, a southern gospel. He, I said, and I looked at him like he was crazy, to be real with you. I was like, really? And he said, and he, and he began to serve God. And he got right with God. He got so saved that his whole life became biblical. His life was sound yes. with God. He was delivered from every sin everything uh, uh, that people say you cannot be delivered from, Amen. right? I knew a man who was on heroin. He told me about his testimony. He was on heroin. And he said that he tried to get right with God. He even prayed. And he, and he tried to get right with God. But what happened was, 
uh, he said that he tried to let go of the drugs and he started itching. And, and he was doing all this stuff. He had me laughing. I was cracking up laughing. But what he was telling me was this, though. He said, uh, he said, what that is, that's called the drug itch. I said, oh, really? Man, you know, I, I, don't, I mean, I don't know about drug itches and all that stuff. But, you know, he said, uh, but one day he came back to the altar with everything in so many words. And at that altar, he met in business with God and said, God, if you save me, I'll never go back to heroin again. Amen. He died. He put that life to death. And not only did he put the drug life to death, he put his entire life to death. Amen. Right? Because, I mean, he really sacrificed. That life I live is over. In other words, I don't care whatever has to die in my life. You got it. And when he died, when he died, he lived. Why? Because he never, he said he never had a drug itch since he surrendered his life Amen. over to God. No reaction, no program, none of this. Oh, well, I got to go uh, over to the to the drug rehab. He didn't need a rehab when he died. Amen. See, that's what y'all don't get. It's when you die, when you right. execute. He began to live for God and got and was willing to go all the way to Washington State, y'all. Willing to go all the way to Washington State to be a preacher. Amen. But some people are not willing to die. You'll never be right with God until you die. People are always going to look at you going, you know what? Uh, uh, they're going to have to try to give you the benefit of the doubt and everything. They have to strain to believe that you're a brother or sister. They just don't say it. You have to die. You have to die. You on drugs? Yes. You been over to this church and can't find relief in that church? Here, here it is. When you gonna die? Amen. When you gonna die? Because there is power through death. Yes. When? People coming back, you know, so and so, you know, man, they cursing and going on. How long you been coming to church? And you still cuss. You really don't believe that Jesus does not. I'll tell you why. Because you're still living. And I know, I know I'm being personal. You must die. You've got to die. As our heads are bowed and eyes are closed in reverence to God. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord Jesus, for your mercy and your grace. Dear Lord God, I hope that this message has found a lodging place in people's heart. Dear God, I leave this in your hands, and I don't know whose heart it perhaps touched, but I know that time is not wasted in this church worship service because of who you are. And dear God, if there's someone that needs to die, someone that needs to execute your plans in their life, let them pray after me. Heavenly Father, I come to you humbly. Lord, I am destroying. I'm going to allow everything in my life to be crucified on the cross with Jesus. My old lifestyle is crucified with Christ this morning. And Lord, my new life is raised with Christ this morning. Because I received Jesus who died on the cross for me and rose on the third day as my Lord and Savior. And from this day forward, I will be what you would have me to be. Say what you would have me to say and go where you would have me to go. Dear Lord, because I believe that you saved me on this serious confession. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you believe that prayer this morning, welcome to the new life. Welcome to the new life. And I hope that you've thrown away the key. Yes. I told this lady not too long ago, regardless of what these people do in, in politics or whatever, I said, 
And really, I wasn't really telling her. I was telling myself this. I said, I have thrown away the key. I am not going to let myself out of what I'm doing. And that's the same way it is, brothers and sisters. We have to have that resolve. I am not going to let myself out of being what God would have me to be. With that type of resolve, guess what? You're on your way to heaven. You have power to live for God. You have power to, to walk in the spirit and you have power to make the flesh submit to your will. Amen? Amen? You have power because you're walking in the spirit. As the Bible says, as the word says, if we walk in the spirit, if you dead, brothers and sisters, there ain't nothing you can't do. You can take anything. There ain't nothing you can't do when you're dead. Hey, check this out, y'all. Church, tonight at 630, let us dismiss in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord Jesus, for all the things that you have accomplished this morning. Dear God, help us, dear Lord, by your grace and your glory to continue to walk with you and let all who have died in the name of Jesus be there tonight at 630. We ask all this and let us invite someone out to the house of the Lord. We ask all this in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Church tonight, God bless you.